We want to welcome to the program the host of Gun Talk, Mr. Tom Gresham is with us. Tom, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm sitting here in my safe space, Cam. <laughs> I've got the safe open. I'm looking in. I feel pretty safe. Your safe space. There you go. Well, uh, hopefully we uh, maybe we will or we won't trigger some folks during this uh, conversation. But <laughs> I, I do appreciate you coming on the program. And I got to tell you, I mean, it has been now a month since the election. And, Tom, there are still a lot of Americans who still, I don't think, have accepted the uh, election results. Well, you know, to your point, they just have trouble accepting accepting reality in any form so they kind of create their own reality which is what you know, is going on right now everything from the uh the russian hacking to the electoral college to whatever they just can't see the world as it is they can only see the world as it's reflected in their own little bubble and, you know, of course that is exactly what cost the democrats the election when they went to the identity politics and the you know, the whole thing of deplorables and everything else. And after a while, you know, honestly, after a while, people in the middle of the country just get tired of being made fun of, of denigrated, uh, of being marginalized and ignored and taken for granted and mocked. And they finally just said, no, nah, don't think so. I actually talked to people who hadn't voted in three elections who said, yep, for this one, I went and I pulled the lever. Wow. That's really surprising. So, so what was it, Tom, that made them? What, what they, it was again. Was it personal at that point? They just decided, you know what, I'm 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 standing up yeah. here and I'm going to cast my vote. What stopped them from voting previously? Did you get into that? Not really, but you know, I think it's it's a case of it wasn't personal, and I think you actually, actually nailed it. This time, it became personal because the Democrats and Hillary made it personal. With everything up to it, including and, you know, basically personified by the whole deplorables thing of you people, you people are deplorable. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking, wait a minute, because what? Because we believe in safe, responsible gun ownership, because we go to church, because we pray, because we pay our bills, because we are not on the dole. What is it about us that makes us deplorable? And in the end, what made us deplorable was we didn't agree with them. And people took it personally and they said, okay, all right, you want to play that game? All right, you finally got me off the couch. Let's go. And that's what <laughs> happened. And uh, as a result, you know, look, I mean, we, and we, you and I have been talking about this for years, right? Good things happen when we vote. Uh, and now I think we're heading into 2017 with the opportunity to hopefully do some good things uh, at the federal level, uh, including national right to carry reciprocity, although the uh, gun control advocates are already uh, saying that that's going to be their line in the sand, uh, and I imagine that'll be their number one. We, we, we've already seen what Obama's lines in the sand mean. Yeah, that? right. <laughs> yeah, those those dotted uh, red lines, we're, right? Yeah, we're going to be able to overcome that. But yeah, you know, we've got this shopping list of stuff we want, Cam. But I think realistically, we know we're not going to get it all. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we can't get as much as we we possibly can. No, that's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, look, at, at the at the federal level, the Senate, uh, right now you got 52 Republicans, 48 Democrats, or at least uh, 46, and then two independent two caucus with Democrats. Um, but there are going to be some Democrats, let's say on the national right to carry reciprocity issue. Look, you've got 25 Democratic senators up for re-election in 2018. Uh, a lot of them are in places like North Dakota, Montana, West Virginia, uh, these are places, look, West Virginia is constitutional carry right now. You can't tell me mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that, uh, national right to carry reciprocity would not be incredibly popular in West Virginia. Uh, how many right. of these Democrats who, who were told, uh, this election year, listen, it's, it's safe and popular to be for gun control. How many of them are going to be hearing from their constituents? We want national right to carry reciprocity. It, it, well, exactly. You know, before the election, I had a, uh, opinion piece published at the Washington times. It said, I called it. Trump's secret armed army, and I think they got up and marched. And so to your point, I, do you remember way back when Bill Clinton and State of the Union in 1995, and he said, you know, we've got a lot of empty seats out there, people that lost their seats because they voted for gun control, but it's okay. And basically him saying that and them losing their seats in 94 is what pushed back the press of gun control for 10 years. I think, to your point, this election is going to do the same thing where there are going to be a lot of Democrats who go, wait a minute, I am not going to fall on my sword for your agenda. 
No, you know, you lied to me last time. You said it was finally safe to come out of the closet mm-hmm. and be a gun banner. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, and to that end, I mean, what do you think? Uh, uh, what What does this mean for the gun control movement? They, they, they again. They told the media. They told politicians. They told Americans this was the year that gun control was going to be popular. Uh, and you know, look, even even Tom with these referendums. Uh, and I've seen a lot of writing, I'm sure you have too, over the last couple of weeks, talking about the the narrow loss in Maine for the background check referendum, uh, which, by the way, lost by four points. You want to talk about a, a narrow loss. It was a narrow loss for gun owners in Nevada, where less than 10,000 votes separated the winners and losers. Yeah. But in none of these states did the gun control advocates get 90% of the vote. They always tell us 90% of Americans are with us here. Well, it was a lot closer to 50% of Americans uh, on Election Day. It's funny you bring this up because I just today I was thinking, okay, it's time to blow the whistle on the non-existent gun control movement. There is no gun control movement. It does not exist. The gun control movement, as we know it, has devolved to one person. There's only one person that's running the gun control movement in the United States, and that's Bloomberg. When you look at every town, you look at mothers, uh, you know, for whatever they're for. Uh, you look at every you look at the violence policy center. You got a little bit of Soros money in there, but the state elections they're all Bloomberg. You look at the John Hopkins uh, University Center for Public Policy and their gun control effort. That's fifty million dollars from Bloomberg. There is no gun control movement in the U.S. There's only Michael Bloomberg funding this effort. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess we saw the uh, some of those big law firms announced this week that they were uh, partnering with uh, those Americans for Responsible Solutions, and they're going to try right. to, right. Uh, you know, uh, re- revitalize all of the uh, the lawsuits, engage in lawfare. But but you're right. I mean, this is I, I think very clearly the uh, the 800 pound gorilla is is Michael Bloomberg. Uh, he spent tens of millions of dollars this year on gun control efforts. Uh, was not always successful, and in fact, again, in you know a state like Maine. Uh, was, uh, you know, gun owners were outspent probably close to six to one, Tom, uh, and yet Mm -hmm. they were able to defeat Michael Bloomberg. Do you think that that offers any lessons for gun owners going forward? It should, but honestly, I will tell you, the, the reality is, and anybody in marketing will tell you, if you have 50 or $100 million to put on messaging, you can get a ton of people to buy in, and you, they have very slick, uh, very well-placed messaging. And what a lot of people don't know is they're not just buying ads. Bloomberg's people go into states like Nevada and Maine and Oregon, and they go and meet with the editorial boards of newspapers and the editorial boards of the, news, of the television stations. And they give them the briefings, the background briefings. In other words, they indoctrinate them so that all the media buys in. They're smart, they're well-funded, and they are organized, and they are determined, And but it's all because of the money. Our problem, frankly, and everybody thinks of the NRA as being big, and while it is kind of big, it doesn't have that kind of money. We just don't. So I don't know where our billionaire or billionaires are, but we better find them because that's what it's going to take. <laughs> Uh, if there are any billionaires out there, just uh, email Tom or I. We'll put you in touch with the uh, the right folks. Uh, you know, and look. Glad in the meantime, <laughs> while we're waiting for our billionaires to uh, to show up, I, I think the one thing that we do have, because as you say, Tom, there really isn't a a gun control movement in this country. There is a gun rights movement, uh, and so yes. we don't have the deep pockets. We can't outspend uh, Michael Bloomberg. But we can outwork Michael Bloomberg. We can out-volunteer Michael Bloomberg. We can out-activate uh, 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 Michael Bloomberg. And I think that's what it's going to take for us to, uh, to, to see those victories, not only in places like Maine, but, but frankly, even in places like New Jersey and, you know, mm-hmm. even states like California. Well, here's a thought. It is perfect for the Christmas holiday season, for, for Christmas, for Hanukkah, for whatever your, your holiday is. Buy somebody who is not an NRA member an NRA membership. If we doubled the membership in the NRA, no one would dare, no politician would dare touch it. And that's easy. I mean, that's really that easy. Just for 35 bucks, you know, it's cheaper than most presents you're going to buy. Just buy somebody 
a membership, you know, for a friend, for your doctor, for your dentist, for somebody. It doesn't matter. Just get that done. That's a piece of activism that's like the easiest thing in the world. Absolutely. Talking again with Tom Gresham, host of Gun Talk. You can find him on Twitter, at Gun Talk. And I I don't know if you've talked much about this, Tom, but, uh, you know, obviously before the election, everybody said, oh, if Donald Trump wins, uh, gun sales are going to plummet. Nobody's going to buy firearms anymore because the only reason people were buying guns is because of a fear of gun control laws. And funny thing, that didn't happen in November. No, and it's still not happening. I'm talking to gun stores every week, and I keep saying, have you seen the sales drop off? They go, no. Now, what they did say is, we've seen the sales change. It is not ARs right now. It is very much defensive guns and hunting guns. But what happened to us, the change is that a lot of people who are holding on to their money because of the uncertainty are now releasing their dollars, mm-hmm. and now they're buying guns. So that's the, the real change that even the media hasn't figured out. All right, I got a fun one for you. If you All want right. to do something funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, well, something weird happened over the weekend. Uh, our first person defender... TV show that we air on uh, YouTube and Roku and all that, but it went viral on YouTube. So just look for first person offender. But one of the videos there, it's about a, a a woman and it's a school shooting scenario that we did. Well, we've all of a sudden, like over the weekend, we got seven hundred thousand views of this video. But what's funny is to read the comments because these are people that discovered it and they're not real gun people. And it's like, oh my God, the old wives' tales are still there. The well, they will just take the gun away from you and use it. Well, you know, if you had uh, people all had guns, then when there was something like this, then all the concealed carry people would shoot each other. And you just keep wanting to say, really? Where has that happened? We have 15 million people licensed to carry, plus the constitutional carry people. I have never heard of concealed carry people getting into a shootout with each other. Nope. But listen, you know, this is the... So we, we talked, we started out talking about the uh, the, the struggle to accept reality uh, and I, I, I think that this is another example of that here. We've been talking about campus carry uh, and some of the opposition to campus carry in the program today. And, and, you know, again, we hear all these arguments, Tom, that, that oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. there are going to be shootouts in classrooms. People can't, uh, they can't handle their, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we got so many people that are drinking. They're going to be just, you know, drunken mayhem. Again, in none of the states that have adopted campus carry have we seen anything like that play out. But you're right. It's right. the same arguments that we've been hearing now going back to the 1980s. On concealed mm-hmm. carry, the arguments their their arguments don't change even in the uh, the the face of more and more facts to the contrary. You know the same people who dubbed Florida the gunshine state when they <laughs> got concealed carry and predicted that every fender bender would you know eventually be a shootout. Thirty plus years from now or now, they are still holding on to the same nonsense as you say faced with this massive body of evidence that they're wrong. Well, I, you know, I, as frustrating as it is, I, I guess the only thing that we can do is, you know, keep trying to put that information out there, right? You can, uh, you, you can lead a, uh, an individual to knowledge, but you can't make them think. Um, that's the frustrating I tell part. People, Cam said, just, just keep, rather than try to beat them down with facts, it is more effective and it's certainly more fun to use questions. Just say, really? Can you show me just three examples? With 15 million people carrying guns, can you give me three examples of that happening? Well, no, but everybody knows. No, no, I mean, everybody may know that, but just three <laughs> examples, please. You know, just one. Can you give me one example? And there's kind of like, and then you say, well, the reason you can't come up with one is because it doesn't happen. It's just a bit, but asking them the questions forces them to reach deep and rather than just parrot what they have heard before, it's okay. I admit it's a it's a vain little piece of entertainment <laughs> I do because it's just fun to put them on the spot that way. It is, but you know, again, it it hopefully it helps them start thinking about this, and that's what we need. We mm-hmm. need folks to be thinking about these issues and not just parroting anybody's talking points, uh, yours, mine, or uh, Michael Bloomberg's. Hey, Tom, you know what that music means. Unfortunately, we are out of time. And thank you, as always, sir, for coming on the program. It is always great talking with you. Always fun, Cam. Thanks so much. Check out guntalkmedia.com. There you go. Tom Gresham hosted Gun Talk with us here on Cam and Company.